Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to Shelf Stories, a channel that tells tales from games, books, and life. I am your host, Jason. Thank you so, so much for stopping by for this latest Shelf Help Reflection. If you follow me on Twitter, uh, Shelf Stories GBL, Games, Books, Life, Shelf Stories GBL. I have been tweeting my rear end off. I've been retweeting and, and posting reflections uh, more than I ever have. Uh, during the process, trying to work through my feelings. Uh, you know, uh, there was a mass shooting that happened in Buffalo earlier in the month. And I did a short video on it. I'm actually in the middle of editing a longer video on it to just really process and you know try to solve problems. To try to make change and wake people up, move things forward. And you can't even grieve and process one mass shooting before another one happens. Welcome to America. Uh, you know, I'm not one of those people that's going to bash America. I love living here. I love the people. There's so much that's good about it. But damn, what is the point of loving something if there's going to be so much just lack of care and lack of safety, especially when it comes to our children? Uh, so I'm doing this in response to the shooting in Texas where a bunch of fourth graders were murdered. Uh, and why, you know, why am I fo so focused on this? Check this out. I just dropped my six-year-old daughter off in her first grade school. I got my three-year-old right there. Just dropped him off at his daycare. Who, what, what parent wants to drop somebody off with a thought in the back of their head that something might happen? And I live in Connecticut. The Newtown shooting happened in Connecticut, a blue state. And we've, you know, reformed our gun laws and you never know. <laughs> it's a whole country and you know you go to the place with the weakest gun laws and that you know unfortunately the chain breaks at its weakest link so so you're just not safe and so i've been really like I, this has messed me up <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest with you uh but i want to try to be constructive i want to move forward uh the title of the video is overcoming learned helplessness and that's what i'm trying to kind of process and get myself uh to a point of i'm the biggest thing that I'm noticing, and I'm a mental health therapist, I'm here at my job, about to go in, about to do my day. You know, I see I see 11 clients today uh, here on a Thursday as I record this. So seeing the discourse about mental health is just insanity making. Uh, the idea that, okay, our, you know, so many people's first instinct is to say, okay, that person had mental health problems. Uh, that's what made them violent. And so underneath that is a stereotype. And this is what I talk about stereotypes in another context, but here it's totally true. The, the stereotype is that, okay, violence, mental health. So if the person was violent, they had mental health problems and like that becomes the quick association and we don't associate mental health with all sorts of other problems, which believe me, they are. Uh, so that's number one. I want to, you know, decouple that, the idea that like, okay, we make that as a quick association. So, you know, what do I do here in my job? Uh, I deal with mental health issues of all sorts of, uh, stripes and the mental health issue that I want to talk about today and process through today is learned helplessness. That is a mental health issue. Why is it a mental health issue? Because it's a mind state that is fatalistic that says we can't do anything, we can't change anything, we're just going to be either victims or potential victims, and our goal in life is to just, you know, avoid uh, the harmful consequences, just live with our heads down, uh, and because there's no hope of changing things. That is a mental condition. And is that mental illness, is that out of the DSM-5 diagnosis, are you going to get, uh, you know, uh, put into a mental institution for that mental condition? No, but that's not mental health. Mental health is things in our brain that promote terrible outcomes, make people unhappy, lock people in to misery. And learned helplessness is misery. So learned helplessness is what I'm seeing <laughs> in response to this. And it's on all sides. I mean, I think there's people that are saying, well, you can't fight City Hall and we just got to, uh, you know, this is something that we live with as part of American culture, blah, blah, blah. And especially from our politicians, good Lord. And I'm not going to pick on any one side. I mean, I think it's all sorts of politicians that are out there saying, you know, well, uh, no law could have changed that. Uh, you know, how can you ban things? Because if you ban one thing, you're banning it for the law abiding citizens. You're not banning it for the uh, the person that's breaking the law and blah, blah. All these these mental things that lock us in to a mind state of learned helplessness. That is mental illness right there on a societal level. I put out my first tweet. The first tweet was, you know, mental illness. is That is the thing. The framework of looking at the shooter as mentally ill is 
you know, dodges the fact that we need to look at a society that is mentally ill and tolerates this bullshit. So anyway, so that's learned helplessness. But the, the issue is that it's learned. I think we could focus on the helplessness and, you know, get hopeless, but it is learned. There are so many strategies that the powerful use, that society uses to put us in this mind state. And you think of it like a trance. You know, we are in a trance that benefits the powerful. Why does this keep happening? Because we have a society that is gripped. It's not even, I'm not even going to talk about gun culture. I'm not going to talk about all this other stuff. What I'm going to talk about is gun makers. Who does this proliferation of guns benefit? Gun makers and the people that own those companies and have stock in those companies and profit from, you know, what those companies are making is the gun makers that are, have this society in a death grip, literal death grip, so that they can sell and sell and sell and profit and profit and profit. Look at the gun sales. There, there's more guns being sold than ever. We have more guns than people. So it benefits them to use the press, use the politicians, use the culture, use all these things, these tools at their disposal to keep us in a trance of learned helplessness while they profit and our kids die. Not about that. I'm not about, uh, you know, giving into that. So what, the, what I want this video to do is to start to help people break that spell. Change your mind, you can change the world. That's every single video that I make. I end with that and there's a purpose to that. Uh, it, this is what I'm talking about. The, change your mind, you can break the spell of learned helplessness and start to do something and make things better. So another part of it is that we get trapped in like the big picture. We get trapped in like the, the most... Uh, the crazy thing is how could I prevent that shooting? How can I make a real difference? You look at it things from a societal level and part of the, the, the trap is that we get stuck thinking about the big picture. And the way forward on that is to realign, again, change our mind, change our focus to the smaller picture. On the progressive side, we are not good at putting together these small steps. Some people do it, but as a, a movement, I think that we're still struggling to have faith in the idea that taking small steps added together can make big changes. So that's number one. We need to change our mind frame away from, we need to change society or we need to you know, make these big sweeping things and really roll up our sleeves and do some uh, real work small steps every single day that can make things better one step at a time. So that's number one. Um, number two, anybody can do this. Make your community better. We know this. We know that helps. We know that healthier communities where, where our neighbors know each other, where we help each other out, where we look out for each other, that has a way more of a chance of catching you know, especially kids like this. So I'll focus on the Texas shooting. Seems like it was a uh, troubled young person, a male. Uh, you know, and that's a lot of the killers. Uh, young males who feel completely dislodged from society, who are in high school and they're not served by their high school. They don't, you know, we, we treat, you know, high school and colleges as one size fits all uh, solution to all of our problems. And it's not. Some kids are just aren't not built for high school and college. It doesn't mean that we give up on them. It means that, you know, we as a society, we need to be more and more creative about how we help these young men. And that's one of the things that's making, you know, kind of me feel a little bit better is I know I'm doing my part. I'm a trained psychotherapist and a big part of my client load is young men. I specifically, you know, focus young men, not necessarily for the violence end, but I understand how our society, our families, our communities, our video games and our all that stuff can just leave young men in such a, a spot where a lot of distress can come in. And a lot of times it's, you know, suicide stuff. It's self-harm. So, I mean, I, I, I try my best uh, to reach out there and, you know, people that are rich and poor and you know, in, in inner city and suburbs and that kind of stuff. Uh, and that's a, a, a mission for me. So, I mean, obviously I'm trained, but I mean, is there something that you can do to improve your community, to touch a life 
to improve the social fabric so that it's better for our children and our teenagers. Uh, so, I mean, that's one thing that you can definitely do. And I know it, it won't solve everything. It won't, uh, you know, well, how is this going to, you know, make a real difference? Well, that's again, that's that's the learn help us to speaking. That's the the trance reasserting itself. Try to resist the trance and get into the small picture. Healing our community is doing something. So I strongly urge you, whatever talent you have, whatever you can contribute, uh, time, money, at, uh, ability, effort, whatever it is, anything you can do to heal our communities and touch young people and uh, people that are isolated, you know, uh, from COVID because of disability or whatever it is, if you can bring them into the fold and make a loving community, that is something that you can do to break this spell. Uh, number two, I mean, eventually the, the little things do need to light, lead up to something bigger. There does need to be a vision. Uh, you know, just to kind of uh, uh, impel forward progress. It, for me, <laughs> I mean, I don't want to get into the electoral politics, and I don't. If, you, if people notice in shelf stars, they do not get into like electoral. Uh, you know, this this politician, that politician, this wing, that wing. It's more about the broader social issues here, uh, and so I'll leave it at the broader social issues. It's about the gun makers, and it's about the uh, acceptance that, like, okay, just you know just freely shoot this garbage into our society. There are plenty of ways to limit that flow that do not, that, that keep people Second Amendment uh, you know, rights in check. And look, I, I'm not a Second Amendment person per se, but I have a family, you know, I have a Latino family and Latino families, if you know anything about them, we run the gambit. You know, there's some people that love it. So in my family, and I've, I've heard all the talk about that. So it's like, all right, fine. It, it's, I don't like it, but there is a such thing as responsible gun ownership. So there's a, there should be a way to uh, deal with that and honor that while at the same time, keeping this garbage away from young people who are impetuous and isolated because our society does terrible by young people. Uh, so laws, it's common sense laws that can be changed and advocated for. Uh, so I don't know if that's within people's purview. You you know you say politics to people and they just kind of like get that ve that veil again. The, the learned helplessness veil. So there are things that can be done that that can be reach out to both sides. Don't buy the hype. Don't buy into the learned helplessness. That benefits them. It's our world. It's our it, we are people. We are parents. We are parents of children. It's our world. It should belong to us. So it won't look like changing the whole world, but it'll be something. And the little somethings can add up to something big. That is uh, the message I want to get out. So uh, this was totally off the cuff. I know it was a little bit rambly, uh, and it's my only video that I've done in one take. <laughs> if you notice, it's usually multiple takes, but this one I just had to like you know to breathe my fire. Uh, and I want to, um, you know, get, get conversation going and, you know, especially the mental health aspect, it, it begins with the mind. It begins with this mindset, the, you know, the veil that society and the powerful put on us that we can't change anything. Garbage. If you can change your mind, you can change the world. Later, everybody.